All right, we have a pretty spicy question here. It's taken from VCAR 2019, paper one, question 24. It says that Millie invested $20,000 in an account at her bank with interest compounding monthly. After one year, the balance of Millie's account is $20,732. The difference between the rate of interest per annum used by her bank and the effective interest, effective annual rate of interest for Millie's investment is closest to. All right, so what this question is asking you to do is to find the difference between the effective interest rate and the nominal interest rate. So we're gonna to have to find both of those. Now we can find the nominal interest rate uh, by creating a rule and setting that rule equal to what we know is going to be equal to after one year. So this is how we're going to find the nominal. I know that after one year, we're going to have a balance of $20,732. Now I'm going to write down the rule that represents investing $20,000 and it compounding monthly. So I'm going to go $20,000, because that's how much I'm starting with, times by brackets, one plus. Now I don't know what R is, do I? Because this R, I'll do this in another color, this R is my nominal interest rate. And I don't know what that is. I do know what my N is. My N is 12 because we are compounding monthly. And then I divide that by 100. And then remember, we then raise this to the power of N. So this here will be raised to the power of N, where N represents the amount of uh, recurrence, the amount of uh, recursions that you've done. Now, if it's after one year and I've compound monthly, how many iterations have I done? So let me say that again. If I have gone through one year, and I've compounded monthly, how many compounding periods have I gone through? How many iterations have I gone through? And hopefully you can recognize that it's going to be 12. I can now solve for my R value here. So I'm gonna go menu 31. 2732 is equal to 2123 times by, then I'll open up a brackets and go one plus, then I might go control divide, and then up the top I'll go R divided by 12, and then over 100. Then I'm going to close this off and I'm going to raise this to the power of 12. And then I'm going to go comma R. Then I'm going to close the brackets there. So that will be what it's going to be there. Good, 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 good. I'm just checking over it. That looks good. Now we have to be somewhat sensible. Does an interest rate of 2000 make any sense? 2400? No, it's clearly 3.6. So it's going to be 3.600% per annum. How can I now find the effective interest rate? Well, to find the effective interest rate, I can use my CAS calculator and go, all right, EFF, put in my nominal 3.6, and then I know it's compounding monthly, and that will give me my answer. So I'm gonna go menu 85, and I want my effective interest rate, so two. I'll then put in 3.6, and then I'll go comma 12, close my brackets, and it's going to give me 3.6. 659 dot dot dot. It's really important that you do not round here. You want to round at the very end. So now, as we come to our last part here, I want to take my effective interest rate and subtract it from my nominal, because remember, that's what we're trying to do. My effective interest rate is 3.659 dot 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 minus 3.600. That really doesn't change anything, does it? So that's what I'm now doing. And if I do this, and remember, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, bring that down, and then subtract it. And then what I really want to do is I want to take this whole thing here. And I want to hit that there, bring it down, and hit enter. And I'm going to be left with 0 0.0599 dot dot dot. So it's going to be closest to B, isn't it? B will be my answer there, because that looks like 0.06%. That's what it's going to be closest to. There's a lot of steps there, isn't there? As you can see, what we did, we first, if I can just grab my highlighter, we first found the nominal by creating a rule, setting it equal, using the solve function. We then found the effective interest rate, again, by using the functions in our calculator. And then we subtracted the effective from the nominal to find the difference between them. And that enabled us to get our answer, which was close to 0 0.6. Lots of little steps there. Let's now look at the examiner's report. You can see that 51% of the state were able to answer this question correctly. So 
you know, not the greatest, but it's not terribly. Let's now read what they've written here. Now it says this question could have been solved by first determining the interest rate of investment using the following entries. What they are giving you here, all of this, this is the finance solver. We have not seen the finance solver yet. We have to wait until we get into the next chapter to see the finance solver. But it does say alternatively, the following method could have been used and this is what we did. So what we did is, oh, did we do this? Uh, we kind of did it a different way, didn't we? We did it a different way. I like my way better. Don't worry about that. Uh, this is another way of doing it. You can read through this to, to see another way. This video is getting a bit too long for my liking anyway. Uh, but if you do want to see this other way, what I have done is I have put in a link to this person here uh, who goes through another way of answering this. And you might like to watch that. I, I think she gives that explanation. Can't remember. Either way, she has a really good YouTube channel and she talks about this kind of stuff. All right. Is that it? I'll see you in the next part.